The Maryland primaries next week are going to set up an unexpectedly tight Senate race. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video, and today it is time to talk about the 2024 Maryland Senate race because everyone... The Maryland Senate race is slowly morphing into one of the most competitive of the year. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean the Republicans are for sure going to win this race. In fact, I still think Democrats are the slight favorites. Either way, the fact that Larry Hogan is running means that this race will be much closer than Democrats want it to be. And on top of that, the Maryland Democratic Party has arguably one of the most competitive primaries of this cycle, and it's going to go down to the wire. We don't really know who's going to win. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Again, folks, all support is greatly appreciated, and uh, yeah. Now, let us get into it, because this is just shocking. I mean, before Hogan announced he was running for the Senate, which, by the way, took everyone by surprise, no one thought the Republicans had any shot of winning in Maryland. I mean, you're talking about one of the most Democratic states in the country. But with Larry Hogan running and Democrats having a very contested primary, Republicans have a legitimate shot to win here. That doesn't mean they're for sure going to win. It doesn't mean that they're the favorites. It just means that Republicans have a good shot of winning a state that Democrats should be winning by 20, 30 points. Maryland's Democratic Senate primary is careening towards a bitter finish as voters decide who to nominate in an unexpectedly competitive race in the Deep Blue Bastion. Prince George's County Executive Angela Olsabrooks and Representative Dave Vitrone are the two main contenders in a primary that has sparked debates over everything from money and politics to electability to Democrats' commitment to diversity to Senate control. The primary election is next Tuesday, May 14th. In other words... This is one of the rare circumstances that Democrats have an actual competitive primary. I mean, seriously, when was the last time the Democrats had a serious primary? I'm not talking about, you know, Fetterman 2022, where he gets 70% of the vote. That, that doesn't count. I'm talking about a race that you don't know who's going to win until Election Day. Seriously, in a competitive race, when was the last time Democrats had that type of primary? 20 years, maybe? Because Democrats are very smart at preventing these competitive primaries that force candidates to spend tens of millions of dollars. Trone, the wealthy founder of Total Wine and More and congressman in his third term, has dumped more than $50 million of his own money into the race. Yeah, $50 million. $50 million. We're not talking about, you know, $5 million. We're not talking about even $10 million. $50 million of his own money he spent on the race. For one, Trone is a very wealthy guy. He can afford this. But the fact that he has to spend this much money in a primary, when you would think that he would be the favorite, is not a good sign for David Trone. He is the favorite, yeah, but he's not the clear favorite that everyone knows for a fact is going to win by 20 points. This race is close, but that should worry Democrats that their supposedly electable candidate, the guy that has a bunch of money is barely winning, should alarm them. The fact that he's not running away at the race despite outspending Ulsa Brooks by like 50 to 1, that's not good for Trump because yes, he is the stronger candidate. But if he's barely beating someone in a primary despite outspending them 50 to 1, how much money does he have to spend? And also Democrats have to spend on beating Larry Hogan. If you could barely beat also Brooks, how the hell do you think you're going to easily beat Larry Hogan? You're not. Now, that doesn't mean that Hogan's going to win. It just means that Democrats, they have a significant problem in a deep blue state. Olsa Brooks, a black woman who oversees one of Maryland's largest counties in the suburbs of the nation's capital, which is also one of the country's richest majority black counties, has consolidated support from local politicos while casting herself as an above-the-fray grassroots contender. Polling shows a candidate's locked in a close race. 
According to 538's polling averages in the Maryland Democratic primary as of May 10th, Trone is pulling at 44%, while Olsen Brooks falls with 38.7%. Which means Trone is the slight favorite, but a six-point lead in a primary after you spend that much money is concerning. It absolutely is concerning for David Trone who's been in Congress for a few years. People know who he is, even before he announced his candidacy. People in Maryland knew, at least much more than about Ulster Brooks, that he exists. He, they know he's a congressman. He represents, you know, Maryland in the House. Everyone knows that, or at least a large chunk of people do. And the fact that he's barely winning, and he's the stronger guy, that's not good for Democrats. The victor will likely face popular former Republican Governor Larry Hogan, whose 11th hour candidacy turned the race from a sleepy affair safely in Democrats' column to a race Democrats have to sweat in one of the country's bluest states, with nothing short of a Senate control at stake. And that's why Democrats are starting to get a bit worried about the Senate map. Because now you're at a point where you might have to spend hundreds of millions of dollars to beat Hogan. Which, to Democrats, you know, that may not seem like a lot, because they have virtually infinite money. But still, at some point, you can't spend that much money and be fine everywhere else. At some point, you're going to have to drop some of your ad spending in other key states like Ohio, like Montana. And remember, Maryland's in a very expensive media market, especially compared to Montana and Ohio. The problems keep adding up for Democrats. Competitive primary. Their supposedly electable candidate is spending so much money he's barely winning the primary. And Larry Hogan, who, mind you, was super popular. This isn't like, you know, he barely won once and that's it. He won by a couple points the first time. Won by even more the second time in a blue wave. And his approval was like... 60-70% in Maryland, a, a Democrat state. People like the guy, and it's not like a Steve Bullock situation in Montana where, yeah, he was well-liked as governor, but Steve Bullock wasn't an actual moderate. Yeah, compared to Democrats, yeah, he was, but Hogan's the definition of an actual moderate. He's a centrist on most issues, and that's why people like him. He's not, you know, a fake moderate, you know, he's not a far-right conservative. He's an actual moderate from Maryland. The race is very fluid. If we were having this conversation a month ago, I'd say that there's a clear advantage for David Trone, but County Executive Olsa Brooks has also had a good run here as of late, said longtime Maryland Democratic strategist Len Foxwell, who, after speaking with ABC News for the story, said in a post on X that he liked both candidates to Trone a little better. I think it's a toss-up right now, Foxwell said. A toss-up. After spending $50 million, David Trone is not the clear front-runner. He might have a slight advantage. That's it. Trone burst onto the scene with a war chest that would prove hard for Olsen Brooks to match and for virtually any candidate anywhere to replicate, blitzing the airwaves with advertisements as part of a 9-to-1 spending advantage over his opponent. Trone and other groups supporting him have spent at least $45 million in advertising in the race, rapidly eclipsing Olsen Brooks and groups supporting her, who put in at least $5.6 million in advertising per nonpartisan ad tracking firm at Impact. That, that's just incredible. He spent $45 million, all right? Let's just say $45 million, maybe $50 million, who knows? But either way, they spent $45 million. Also, Brooks spent $5 million, yet they're barely winning. On top of that, Trone has the backing of congressional heavy hitters such as House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries. Yeah, that's right. He has the support of Hakeem Jeffries and others in leadership. But despite... That, despite the spending advantage, he's up by six points, and that's it. Granted, he's still the favorite. No one's denying that, but this is not a clear favorite situation where you know he's going to win by 20. No, he's barely winning. However, he has been tripped up in the past few weeks. A verbal slip-up in which he uttered a racial slur instead of the word bugaboo sparked a wave of negative headlines and ushered more endorsements to Ulsa Brooks. Also, 
A recent ad supporting Trone featured one supporter saying, The Senate is not a place for those who need training wheels. A swipe at Ulster Brooks that critics said was a punch below the belt. Which isn't really. Because Ulster Brooks, her experience is a county executive of Prince George County. Yeah, that that's one of the largest counties in Maryland. I understand that, but does she have the experience to be in the Senate? I don't know. I don't think that's really a valid criticism of Trone to attack her for being inexperienced. But yeah, the, the first part, that's what really caused this to be a competitive race. He effed up, he used a racial slur at a committee hearing, and that's when everything fell apart for the campaign. He was, you know, he was not leading by 20 points, but he was still up by like 10 to 15 points before that. Before he made that massive slip up, he was winning much more than he is now. Tron apologized for the verbal slip, saying he didn't know the word was a racial slur. And I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, it's one of those words that you might have heard it once in your life, and you know it's a racial slur, but outside of that, no one says it on a regular basis, especially in the modern day. You know what he said? I'm not going to say it here, obviously, but it probably was a legitimate mistake by David Trone. But this is a major issue for Trone for three reasons. One. The demographics of Maryland, especially on the Democratic side, is extremely African-American. It's like 45%, I think, on the Democratic side. It's some crazy amount. It might be way more. But that's a big problem for Trump. A lot of voters have heard about this, and they're not happy with what he said. Number two, he's going against an African-American woman. And so it makes what he said much more impactful because he's going against a candidate that would be offended by what he said. But number three, and this is the most important part, Democrats care so much about identity politics, and that's going to possibly be the thing that kills David Trone's chances of winning. I, I still think he's the favorite, but if he somehow loses, it's going to be because he's an old white dude. That's a fact. That's the Democrat Party now. If you're an old white male, and if you're straight on top of that, you're screwed. You're not going to win, at least in competitive primaries. You're not going to win. Most of the time, you're going to lose, especially if you're going against a African-American woman like David Trone is going against. That's a significant problem that Democrats are going to deal with because they, in a couple of years, this is going to backfire on them because you're going to end up with someone like Kamala Harris as the presidential candidate. And everyone knows Harris would get crushed. But they have trained their voters to vote not on policy, though, really, the modern Democratic Party, everyone agrees on everything, except, like, one or two things. And that's automatically makes you a dino, that makes you a Republican in disguise. You know, you get all that. But since every Democrat is virtually the same on every issue, they don't have to worry about electing a dino. They don't have to worry about electing a moderate Democrat, because even the moderates for Democrats, that just, like, instead of being against the party on one issue, they're against the party on two. whoop de frickin do But outside of that, policy-wise, Democrats agree on everything. And that's the reason that the Democrats care so much about identity, because everyone agrees on everything. Now it's just, okay, we gotta pick the most diverse option in every race. It doesn't matter what they actually believe in, we need to pick diversity every single time. You have an old white dude going against an African-American lady. That's a fact in this race. And that's going to hurt David Trone the most. Now, does that mean Trone's going to lose? I still think he's the favorite, but the fact he's barely winning, I could see an upset occurring next Tuesday. But we just got to see what happens. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, smash the like button down below. Subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the social media accounts in the description down below, and of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.